Greetings, salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Mailbag. This is our mailbag show where all we do is we take your questions that you email to us and we just talk about them and answer them on the show. This show is very casual. It's very laid back. I've got my delicious soda. <sighs> so we're just going to sit here today and address the question. Now, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address on the show, email us anytime at amcmovietalk at gmail.com. And uh, we try to answer some questions every day on AMC Movie Talk Monday through Friday. And then we answer a bunch more here on the weekends in AMC Mailbag. So joining me today, first of all, she is AMC's own Miss Clark Wolf. Clark, thanks for being here. Hey, John. Long time no see. Yeah, it's been all of uh, a day. <laughs> Also joining us today, of course, he is the director of the upcoming film, uh, the upcoming documentary, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, Mr. John Schnepp. John, how you doing? Hey, long time no see. What happened? It's been it's been forever. You yeah. never call. You don't return my calls. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was too busy watching robots fighting monsters with you guys. <laughs> All right, let's not waste any time. We'll jump right into the first question. The first question today comes from Matt Loss, who writes... Hey guys, love the show. My question is, if they do have Supergirl in the second Man of Steel, how would they introduce her? In the comics, she has always been Clark's cousin, but now Krypton has no natural births. So, what do you think will happen? Schnepp, let's start with you. Let's say, first of all, should they even use a Supergirl, which we've kind of addressed before, but then if they do, considering they have this issue of no natural birth, how do they address this issue of being a cousin and whatnot? Um, well, I don't think that uh, Cal L and uh, and her are going to have sex of any kind, so I don't think that's <laughs> going to be introduced in Superman two. I really don't think that they're going to introduce her in Superman two. I think that was kind of like a little fun thing that they threw in, and then they made a prequel comic. But I don't think she's going to be found frozen in in ice. I could be wrong, but I just don't see that happening. If they did introduce her, I don't think they would bring in the uh, Supergirl being pregnant aspect to it unless brainiac shags her you know <laughs> it's just you know then we have like some kind of weird like i am brainiac and your cousin supergirl's love child you know like a little green kid floating around that's you know it's all i could see happening what a about Maury you clark episode. how do you see it happening yeah i think we should open with them on maury and uh and find out that brainiac is the father um <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Schnapp. I think you're right. I I don't think we're gonna get it in Superman two. Actually, I think I think it was it was just the fun little Easter egg. Same with the um, Wayne Enterprises Easter egg that was in there. You know, it's some fun things letting the fans of the universe know that it's a complete universe and that these things are possibilities in the future. But I don't think that they're gonna introduce that in Superman two. You know, the the, the difference though between this as an Easter egg and say like the Wayne logo on the satellite Man of Steel is, is that the things about the prequel comic with Kara coming to Earth and whatnot played significant roles in the movie, right? Because, for instance, we had the ship, her ship, in essence, kind of fulfilled the role of the Fortress of Solitude in this particular film. So, I mean, that plays a pretty key role because it leaves these questions. Where did the ship come from? How is it here? Who was in that empty pod? Like, there was a dead body in the one pod. What's with the empty pod? Now, we know from the comic book that uh, at least the prequel comic that Kara gets out of the pod and crawls away. And that was how many thousands of years ago? Do they say that was 20,000 20, years yeah, ago? Yeah, about 20,000 years ago that that happened. So here's a theory that I heard some people floating around. And I'm going to tell you what. At first, I guffawed at this. I uh, say, so get that out of here. But the more I think about it, I I'm not saying this is what I would do. But the more I think about it, the more plausible this kind of sounds to me. And this is it. What if she dragged herself away? At the longer she was on Earth, the slower her aging started to happen to the point where she just stopped aging at some point. And she got away from humanity, went off to some island, maybe with a bunch of Amazons, maybe became their queen. I heard some people floating this notion that Kara actually becomes Wonder Woman. Now, that would explain Wonder Woman's superpowers and her super strength, her flight, all that kind of nonsense. Um, now, I want your thoughts on that. But before I do, the whole idea about family lineage, how can she be his cousin if there's no natural birthing? And, you know, they do say in Man of Steel that there are still, even though they do this artificial birthing, there are still bloodlines, 
remember uh, Jorel and uh, General Zod talk about that. You know, which bloodlines will survive, which bloodlines work. So I got right. a feeling that although it's all artificially created, I got a feeling it's created through the existing bloodlines. So that's probably how they say she's uh, she's his cousin. If they ever do get around to it. Now, for the record, I don't think we're ever going to see Supergirl or Superwoman, whatever you want to call her in this Justice League universe, in this new Man of Steel universe, I don't think we're ever going to see her, and I'm certainly not going to lose any sleep over not seeing her. I don't think it would work. But if they do, that's an option. Schnepp, somebody suggests the idea that, hey, Kara actually becomes the modern-day Wonder Woman. Do you, do you buy that? Do you think that's something that could be a possibility? Well, um, yes and no. I think that's... You know, I think in the modern superhero films, everyone likes to be like, you made me. No, but you made me first. Remember Batman, Joker? Right. It's like once they introduced that in 89, every single superhero film that's followed since has felt like they need to follow that model. Like, you know, Doctor Doom must be somehow woven into the Fantastic Four's origin. No, no, <laughs> stop doing it. There's comic books that exist that, that have existed for 50, 60, 70 years. Try to use those. That's where the that's where the origins come from. You don't have to come up with your brand new stupid origin that sucks. <laughs> Try to use the ones that are actually awesome that writers wrote, that comic book artists drew that you're basing your movie on. Try that. What Marvel's do you think? been doing it for like 10 years, and it's working great. What so. do you think, Clark? How do you see that all working, or do you see it working at all? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I guess I guess logistically it it makes sense that origin story that they kind of the the internet sort of came up with and floated out there makes sense and it does a good job explaining where the Wonder Woman superpowers came from and all that, but I mean, I I I I grant again, I agree with you, Snap. I don't understand why we can't do some screenwriting and refer to the books and refer to the history and create the story or but you guys all also know, and I've said this on Mailbag before, I actually don't think that, I mean, if they want to weave that into the Justice League story, that's one thing, but I don't need a standalone Wonder Woman right off the bat. And so if they're trying to say that, they're trying to tie in Wonder Woman to Superman in order to introduce that out, okay, but I don't know, I don't need all this creative storytelling. When I say creative storytelling, I mean uh Revisionist. Up story. Thank I also, you. Yes. I also think it's weak storytelling. What is Batman somehow related to Kal El exactly. as well? And Green Lantern is his is his ring part of Krypton? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like come on. It's you know, the it's Justice like, it's, League. It's not Justice Family. We don't. It's yeah. not a sitcom. <laughs> Just call it the House of L and make it a sitcom. I mean, that's what it should be <laughs> on um, CBS, yeah. starring Tyler Perry. Yeah, yeah, Kara's pregnant again. She's like, bow, 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 bow. <laughs> woo! Yeah, I'm just popping out Amazons. Come on over. I got some apple pie. <laughs> um, yeah, Kara uh, shouldn't be like some ageless Amazonian. That's stupid. So that's all I have to say about that. So. Well, I don't think it's that bad of an idea. So anyway, let's let's move on to the next question. Although I, I wouldn't do it myself. I wouldn't do it, but. Yeah, you know, I, I won't. I won't call it the stupidest idea in the world if it well, did happen. Here, look. I mean, Wonder Woman's origin is she she was birthed from clay. So I mean, you know, her origin. If you're really going to go from the '40s origin, is already kind of goofy, and it's all God related with Mars. Like I'm going to suppress women. So you got to come up with something new anyway. But tying it in with Superman and Kara, I don't know. That's my beef. I'm it like, is a stretch. It, it is a stretch. All right, let's move on to the next question. The next question comes to us from Ryan, and Ryan writes, I recently found your show on YouTube. My question is, with a Justice League movie, do you think Warner Brothers could somewhat try to use the storyline from the game Injustice Gods Among Us? They don't necessarily have to follow scene for scene, just the basic idea of Superman kills Joker in an alternate universe, he turns evil, and so on. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Uh, well, Ryan... Look, the the story in the game of Injustice Gods Among Us is actually really, really cool. It's great. But it's mostly great for those of us who already know everything about it. For those of us who are really familiar and comfortable with Superman and Batman and Green Arrow and Flash and Lantern and all these guys, we are super comfortable with it, and so it works for us amazingly. But to jump into a Justice League film where you're, where people already don't know, you gotta understand, most of your audience, 85% of your audience, really won't know much about any of these characters. I mean, we know who Superman is, we know who Batman is, yeah, yeah, but really, 
most of the audience isn't going to know much about any of these characters. So to jump into a movie and not only introduce them, but then also introduce a parallel universe, which, by the way, parallel universes to me are the stupidest, most idiotic, hmm. lazy things comic books have ever come up with. That's right. I, I hate alternate universes yeah. and different Earths and all that kind of nonsense. I, I just Earth 11. I'm from Earth 11. That's why I'm wearing this purple outfit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't. Come on. There's no need for that stuff. And you and. I just don't see, while it worked great in the game, and I was really immersed in it with the game, I just don't think it would work. Because now you're confusing everybody. It's like, wait a minute, who's this Deadpool guy? Not Deadpool, I'm sorry. Who's this Deathstroke guy? Why? Wait, there's two of them? Is he twins? No, like, there's just... I no, I, I just can't see it. Maybe 30 years from now, when they've done six... Justice League movies, and they've right. kind of laid the groundwork for everybody. Maybe, but I, I, I just can't see that functioning. Maybe as a cool cartoon um, yeah. movie for people to get on home video or something that could be really fun. But the well, game they, is already kind of its own cartoon movie in many ways. Yeah. If you watch the, you can go on YouTube right now and just search for it. You can watch all the cutscenes from Injustice Gods Among Us pieced together in one long movie format. It's like over an hour. I watched a bunch of it. I'm yeah. like, it's, it's really well done, and it's super long. There's a lot. I was like, ah, oh, just ingest this, and oh, my God, it's over an hour? I was like, I didn't get to watch all of it yet. So, <laughs> so Schnepp, let's, let's get to you on this then. Like, What would you think? Would there be some pros to the idea of just, instead of starting with Justice League, just go right into an Injustice Gods Among Us? Uh, no, not at all. I, I, you know, I think it's an interesting question to, to, to ponder and oh, it talk certainly about. Is, yeah. 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 And, and then definitely say, no, please, God, don't do that because yeah, I agree. I mean, that's the housekeeping of comic books is why they create all these multiple worlds. So they could be like, Hey, we got a green lantern. He's gay. Oops. It's on another earth. It's a total different earth, by the way. It's earth 11 or, or universe H. It's like, that does none of this matters because we could wash it away. We got our Green Lantern back. He's on the normal planet. So it's like it's, none of these decisions ever really have any you know lasting power. All these superheroes always die and then they get reborn. That's just the nature of comic books. So I mean the other the the part of using an alternate world like where Superman like the Joker killed Lois Lane. That's already been done in a comic book about eight years ago, even before Injustice. It was already a comic book story where Superman killed the Joker because the Joker killed Lois Lane. So, um, you know, these kinds of stories keep getting regurgitated and retold in different and new ways. That's the way of a comic book. If, you're, if you've been a longtime comic book reader, you've read hundreds of thousands of different alternate takes on all your favorite characters. And then they merge all those Earths again into one Earth and then create alternate Earths again. So that happens about every 10 to 25 years, and it started with Marv Wolfman's Crisis on Infinite Earths, end of history lesson. But that's what I'm talking about. It's like, in Injustice? Nah. I mean, it's a video game. I want to see what the, the Justice League movie that we've all been promised now by the cool, awesome movie called Man of Steel. Now that's the building blocks. You had Dark Knight, which is definitely like elements of it will be in there like the Wayne tech you know the, they have certain elements that'll be there but now it's up to like the next three or four years to build that into a really cool film so what do you think Clark plus to just directly answer the question you know if you're taking the very basic premise of the Joker killing Lois Lane that means you've got to reintroduce the Joker and in our cinematic world that we live in I know I know we talk about this all the time, Nolan's universe is a completely separate universe, but that doesn't erase the fact that Heath Ledger is her his per portrayal of the Joker very recently has become so iconic. What are you going to do? Are you going to start a Justice League movie and then say, oh, and by the way, here's a new Joker for you? I don't necessarily see that being the best idea. Like you said, John, maybe 30 years from now after, you know, Heath Ledger's performance is, is still valued, but, you know, it's, it's more time has passed and you can introduce that character again. Like, I'm sure we'll see a Lex Luthor again, you know, after Kevin Spacey or Gene Hackman or whomever else you want to say, but there's been more time. So I think that we're going to have to put a little bit more distance in between Heath Ledger and whomever is going to play the Joker next. Hey, here's a weird idea. Instead of even doing, uh, you know, Injustice... Before you do Justice League, do Hall of Doom and do like an all villains movie, like show the origins of villains and stuff. 
you know, and tie that in maybe with some like, oh, these villains, because they're always like, you made me. No, you made me first. Show the villain creating the superhero, you know? You could have like Green Lantern getting born. You could have the Flash getting born by showing like the villains creating them. Odd bo- cornball idea, but you know. Cornball idea, but I- I'll say this. I'm totally for, I have no problem with relaunching Joker. I, I mean, I would have been totally cool with them recasting Joker and having Joker in Dark Knight Rises. I don't think the way to honor what Heath Ledger did by bringing that character to such life, I don't the way, think the way you honor him then is by taking that character that he busted his creative ass to get really going and then take that character and put him on the shelf to collect dust for 15 years. Right. But, right. but, I mean, I also don't think that you you bring Joker back in a Justice League movie. You bring him back for Batman. You yeah. have to reestablish Joker and who he is in relation to Batman. You can't just jump right into a Justice League at all. So in that regards, I, I totally agree with Clark. Can I just say one thing real fast? Is yeah. that I agree with you, John. I, I'm not, I don't want anyone to think that I'm suggesting like put Joker away. And I actually agree with you, John, that I think that I know that they were all so personally close to Heath Ledger and therefore out of respect for the rest of the trilogy, I think that they didn't want to go there. But I agree with you. I think if he hadn't have died and if maybe he had walked, meaning Heath Ledger, and he had walked away from the franchise, you know, reintroducing the character sooner than later would have been the right way to go about it because it's like, okay, we've got a new actor in there and, and it's not this like sacred ground almost, but the fact that Nolan's trilogy didn't, it didn't even speak of the Joker in, in Dark Knight Rises or didn't even, you know, didn't even deal with the Joker in Dark Knight Rises, I think ma- kind of made it like, oh gosh, okay, now we have to with care, handle with care this reintroduction. Right, yet, the, yet they have Scarecrow and Ross Al Ghul in it. You know Exa- what I'm saying? Exactly. Like all, everybody else is in it except the the coolest character of all of Batman, except for Batman. Right. The joke. So I was like, all right. Well, listen, we got to move on to the next question. We still got a few we got to get through. The next question comes to us from Muhammad Ali, who writes. A teaser trailer for How to Train Your Dragon 2 came out recently. Love to hear your thoughts on that. I particularly loved it. However, I don't like the title of the movie. They should have been more creative on that. I mean, just slapping two on the previous title doesn't seem to cut it. Cheers from the engineering par- department at the University of Waterloo, Canada. My friend Mohammed, I have spent many fun evenings with ladies from the University of Waterloo. I come from a long lineage of engineers myself, actually. My brother, my dad, my grandfather, my uncles are all engineers. I am the black sheep of the family who got into the movie business. Um, so anyway, uh, I got to tell you this right now. I much prefer putting two on the end. I much prefer that. What's the point? What, what's the creativity in coming up with a title? There's, there's, no, there's no real creative energy in coming up with a title. Yeah. That, that's not where the creative juices flow. To me, put a two on it and then put a three on it and then put a four on it. How to Train Your Dragon is already a great title. Now put two and three and four. So you know why? 15 years from now when I'm going back, it's like, I want to watch one of those How to Train Your Dragon movies. I know which one is which. <laughs> I right. know which order they come in. I yeah. really, per- me personally, I love it. Now, getting to the actual trailer itself, I loved it. It's just a teaser, but it looked gorgeous. You felt the adventure in it. And I love that the ca- the main character being voiced by uh, Jay Burchell, they, he's aged. Normally with these cartoons, when they do sequel, everybody's still the same age. Kids are still kids, but he's actually grown up. He's actually like five, six years older now. And they're reflecting that in his look. And I really like that they do that. I'm really looking forward to this movie uh, myself quite a lot. Clark, what, did you have a chance to see this trailer? And what did you think about it? I did. I watched the teaser, and um, I actually hadn't seen the first one. I want to see the first oh, one. Oh, you got to see the first one. Yeah, I've heard such nice things about you it. You would so love it. You would absolutely it, love it. It's so good. I think I'd like it too, actually. So um, I, I will check that out. But um, I thought the teaser was beautiful. It was really cool, and um, and it it just it felt it felt like a like a crazy cool adventure. So I'm I'm down, and I'll definitely check it out. And um, I'm I you know I mean if you're gonna if you're gonna add a slap a two on there, if you're gonna call it the next chapter, I don't know, whatever, who cares? I mean, as long as I guess you're getting another one. But you know, two is fine by me. So that's that's my take on that. What do you think, Snap? Well, you know, we talked about the that numbering thing a little bit with like like, you know, Thor, the Dark World. I mean, I, I'm in agreement because in about fifteen years, 
like once there's like eight Thors or something, you're going to be like, man, I want to watch Thor number three. Which one was that again? Was that the Dark World? Loki's Laughter? Uh, <laughs> Dude, I, I already uh, do that with the Harry what Potter films. I already do that with the Harry Potter. I have no, and those are recent. I have no yeah. idea what order those stupid things come yeah. in. None. Prisoner of Alkaban or Alzkabaz. <laughs> what was that one? I think that's Azkaban. number four or six. It's like, it's not five. It's four or six. It's three. Well, is it? I don't even. Yeah. I was going to say, if you were going to rename it, how to, how to retrain your dragon, eh, how to constrain, <laughs> constrain your dragon. Eh, it doesn't really, you know, you know, how to whip your dragon back into shape, you know, how to hug your dragon. There's a whole bunch of ones that would just suck. So it's like how to train your dragon too. kind of, you know, it's the, it's the way Sums sequels it work. Up. Yeah, it kind of sums it up, and you could always put a subtitle on there. You know, if you want to get extra sweaty, how to train, how to train your dragon t- to, uh, you know, electric boogaloo, dragon love, or call it whatever <laughs> you want. Exactly, you know, my electric secret boogaloo. pyramid, dragon power, whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, you Clark definitely see it because I was re- I was resistant to seeing it. I was like, I'm not seeing that dragon movie. You know, no way. So, <laughs> and I finally saw it, and if they they treat the dragons like kittens. They make them like cats. So it's like it, I was blown away at how fun it was to like watch you know watch these like cat dragons hang out and then they like it was really a fun movie. So. I got okay. Then I have homework. I have homework for this weekend. Yeah. After the heat tonight, I am gonna watch How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, and I should it. point out that the coolest dragons were the ones that they treated like dogs. The ones that <laughs> acted like dogs. Anyway, hmm. Shep and I are the opposite sides of the fence on this. That's All right, fine. we gotta so we gotta pick up the pace here. Let's get on to the next question. Right. The next question comes to us from Matt Loss who also uh, submitted an earlier question. He writes, Hey, guys, love the show. Do you think there's a chance of having Robin in the next Batman reboot? A cool Robin, though, not a Chris O'Donnell one. Since WB is planning a Justice League movie, I think Teen Titans uh, could be involved in the universe. What do you think? Schnepp, let's start with you. You think we could see a Robin? No, please no, is all I could say. Uh, you mean a, a cool Robin, not like Chris O'Donnell? You mean like a 12-year-old child being endangered <laughs> by a man dressed like a bat? Something cool like that, maybe, is what you're thinking about? See, it, kinda, it works in comic books, but then all of a sudden you slap that into some reality and you have a small child shivering with people shooting at him. You have a weird guy, the Joker, like, oh, what are you, 12 years old? Hey, mm-hmm. You know, it's not going to work out. And Batman would never do that in, like, the real world, like, the Nolan world. Batman would simply not take on, like, an 11-year-old boy and slap him in some yellow trunks and be like, why don't you jump around with me? Yeah, I mean... Try to stop crime. It's just not... It doesn't work that way. And I I also think it's like Teen Titans works great as a cartoon. I mean, let's just get Justice League made first. And everybody's jumping, like, trying to get... Injustice, you know, Injustice uh, with 800 characters all in one movie. Or what about Teen Titans? It's like, how about Justice League? That's going to take, like, three or four years. Let's yeah, get that. Uh, the whole question about, hey, not not like the Chris O'Donnell one, uh, a cool one. I'm going to offend so many people. And I hope you don't get offended just because I have a different opinion on a cartoon <laughs> character. There is no such thing as a cool Robin. There's no such thing as a cool Robin. No such, I agree with him. I mean, the, the coolest thing about Robin is Nightwing, after he's grown up and moved on from Batman, you know, his, the fact that he has a history, that's yes. kind of cool. But that doesn't mean I want to go into and look at this thing. You're right. Batman wouldn't bring a 13, a 14, a 15, a 16-year-old kid yeah. along with him in tight little green shorts. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's just, that does not work. And a Teen Titans, nobody wants a Teen Titans. They just don't. Now, I know... Yeah. That, you know, some of us with that are a certain age that kind of maybe watch the, the the couple of seasons that was on TV and those friends maybe, but 95% of the movie going audience out there have no desire to see a Teen Titans movie. It's a Zero. silly and, yeah. and, and it's for children. That would be for children. Right. Um, and I, I just know now, like I said, I know some people are gonna be so bothered by the fact that I'm saying that I'm sorry, but I got to tell you the truth. That is my honest opinion. So no, I do not want Robin. I hope they never go in that direction. I don't think they will. And I don't think we'll ever see a live action teen. A teen cool Titans Robin. Movie. No. <laughs> Clark, how do you see it? Uh, short and sweet. I second everything you said. I even wrote an answer here, <laughs> a note that said, probably not. <laughs> <As> in, <laughs> no. So there you go. All right, let's move on to the next question. The next question comes from uh, Aubreth Versary, who writes, I've noticed that no one has mentioned Malficent movie coming starring Angelina Jolie. I love her as an actress, and I'm excited to see Disney put focus on one of their real villains. What do you think of the movie? Will it be a success? 
Uh, Clark, start with you. Yeah, so um, Maleficent scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. She is seriously the scariest Disney villain. I know a lot of people would say uh, Snow White, Evil Queen. No, Maleficent and her glowy eyes, and she can get into your house when you don't invite her in, and she's going to murder your ass. That sounds like my ex-girlfriend, to be honest (laughs) with you, but okay. (laughs) Well, maybe she's Canadian. I don't know. (laughs) Um, But, uh, so Maleficent is scary as hell. Um, and uh, and look, I'm not a huge Angelina Jolie fan. However, I think this is perfect casting. And if they go balls to the wall, if they go dark with this, because it is a Disney film, it remains to be seen how they're going to handle the fact that they're doing a movie solely based on a villain, uh, which I'm totally on board for. And I don't think they could have picked a better one to start with. But that being said, I want them to go for it. I want them to let Angelina Jolie be crazy, and I want her to be be brutal, and I want her to be, like, you know, creepy as hell. And for, if any of you guys watching Mailbag haven't watched the cartoon in a while, A, it's beautiful. But second of all, she is scary, like, legit. So I'm, I'm on board, and I hope they do it right. What do you think, Schnepp? Plus, doesn't she turn into a giant dragon? Yes, in the, yeah. she's she does. a giant fire breathing purple dragon with weird horns. Um, yeah, I, I see. Like most Disney animated uh, movies that were made in the '40s and the '50s and six in early '60s, they were really dark. You remember yeah. Bambi's mom burns to death in the forest? It's the first five minutes of the movie. There's very dark overtones, and there's like in a in a real way too. Like, hey. People's moms die, like Dumbo. A lot of crying involved in Disney movies. A lot of trans- <laughs> transformative crying and growing. So I think uh, this is going to be great. I love Angelina Jolie. I don't know what, what what's up, Clark, why I got to be hating on Salt. <laughs> what's up with uh, Sorry, the hatred on Salt and uh, Sorry, Wanted? Chef. She knows yeah. how to throw – she knows how to bu- bend bullets, yo. Come on. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all about seeing this film. I, I hope it's great. For the record, I loved Wanted. I love that movie so I much. I never said yeah, anything bad about Wanted. I just you said did. Don't... You were talking yeah. trash about Angelina Jolie before yeah, we started the show. Oh, John. Salt Wanted. Thanks Born a salt lot. On that wound. Is this a comment board? Is that what this is? I remember this is like specifically. A comment board, isn't it? I remember specifically before we started the show, you talking about the only thing that could have made Man of Steel worse is if they put Angelina Jolie in it. Oh, my God. Like Angelina Jolie played Supergirl is the only thing. <laughs> That would have made me hate it worse. Oh, I love yeah, I remember, you guys. I remember when you I said that. You guys. I love you both. All love right, you. let's get to the last question for today. Uh, although I will say this. One of the things we're not talking about about this movie, Ellie Fanning um, mm-hmm. is in it, and Charto Copley is in it. And oh, I cool. think those are two really great additions to the cast. This is going to be the first time outside of A-Team that we see um, uh, Charlto in something that's okay. not – a Neil Blomkamp movie because <laughs> right, he, right. he was he was of course Howling Mad Murdoch. I think he's yeah. a terrific talent. I can't wait to see him in Elysium. Uh, yes. I, to me, he's the coolest part of the trailers for Elysium. So, oh yeah, that's yeah. gonna be really cool. All right, last question of the day comes to us from Alexander, who writes, "Hey guys, love the show. My question is about Andrew Garfield suggesting a gay Spider Man. Do you think this should ever happen? All right, let let me start this off." This went all over the place the other day, and um, I, I'll i be honest with you, because I'm never afraid to give my opinion about anything, but you always got to be careful about how you give your opinion on certain topics, and this could instantly and easily be a topic that gets taken really the wrong way if you don't explain yourself right. So let me address this. For those who don't know what he's talking about, and it came out the other day that Andrew Garfield kind of made a joking suggestion that, hey, what if MJ... Of course, Mary Jane. What if MJ was a guy? And well, obviously suggesting a gay romantic relationship between uh, Spider-Man and, uh, and, and MJ. All right. So would I be okay with this? And I'm going to give my answer, but then I want you to hear my answer out. Absolutely not would I be okay with this. Not in the least. But here's why. There are many comic book characters... That I mean, most comic book characters have some kind of love interest, but there aren't many characters that have an iconic love interest. Superman and Lois Lane. That's a big iconic one. But after that, 
It's Spider-Man and Mary Jane. Some people will even make an argument and make a convincing argument that a Spider-Man Mary Jane is a more iconic relationship than even Superman and Lois Lane. Uh, I'm not going to say which side of the fence I come down on in that because I don't really think it matters. But the point is, if you took a character like Storm, well, she was married to Black Panther. Okay, yes, but that's not really a defining thing about Storm. You know, if you came out in a new rebooted X-Men universe and you said, hey, and this one, Storm's going to be a lesbian. It'd be okay. Cool. That works. Yeah. If you're going to come out with a new one and say, hey, um, maybe not Gambit, um, Quicksilver. Quicksilver's going to be a gay guy in this one. I'd be okay. That's fine. But Spider-Man has this iconic, a part of the, I always talk about this. I'm okay with you changing hair color, changing accents, changing skin tone, ch changing ethnicities. Heck, I'm even okay with you making Jimmy Olsen, uh, what was her name in it? A woman. Jenny Olsen. Yeah, Jenny. I'm even cool with you changing genders. As long as you don't touch the key essential elements to who that character is. And I would make the argument that the, the relationship between Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson is just an iconic and key essential element to who Spider-Man is. It'd be like saying to me, there's a great HBO movie on, right? The Candelabra about uh, that uh, Michael Douglas Liberace. and Matt Damon is about Liberace, right? If you were to come to see, hey, let's, I'm going to make a new movie about Liberace, but in this one, he's going to be straight. <laughs> I'd say, well, wait a second. <laughs> That's kind of an important detail about the great Liberace's life. But it's on an alternate planet. It's an alternate universe, John. <laughs> it's universe Earth 2. <laughs> so, I mean, I would make the argument that, no, no, that is too key and important part of who that character is. I've got no problem in general playing around with the sexual orientation of a character as long as with that particular character, it doesn't touch on a key essential element to who that guy is. And the relationship between Peter and Mary Jane, way too iconic. I'd say, no, that is something you should never even consider touching any more that you should consider touching the, the sexual orientation of Liberace in a new Liberace movie because it's just too important to who he is, unlike a lot of other characters. So, Clark, how do you see this? I think Andrew Garfield just doesn't want to have a love interest that's not his girlfriend because he's scared <laughs> of a wandering eye, maybe. Um, man, people would lose their minds. They would lose their minds uh, if that happened. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I, but I, well, I don't have a problem with the um, changing the sexual orientation of a common char a character that we. Perhaps no, but uh, but yeah, I think you make a good argument, John. I think that you're right. Mary Jane and Spider-Man is a, you know, that's kind of one of the quintessential comic book love stories. So, um, you know, perhaps Mary Jane should have her, you know, should be a lady. So, um, but I don't know. I mean, I think he was, I think he was mostly kidding. I know a lot of people have said half kidding. I think he was mostly kidding. So. Schnepp? I don't know. I think he was 100% kidding. <laughs> and this kind of thing got so blown out of proportion that it's like, even to talk about it to me is kind of silly, but silly. since he was joking, I'm not even going to say Andrew Garfield. You're like, look, he was joking, but if we're going to throw it into perspective, they've already ha had Spider-Man established that he just had a relationship or is in a relationship with Gwen Stacy. So if MJ shows up, he's not going to like flip sides all of a sudden, unless you're going to make Spider-Man two and three about not about Spider-Man and solving crime, but like his sexual orientation, it becomes this weird a uh, totally different kind of a movie. So I don't think that's going to happen. So, All right, folks. Well, that'll do it for us. We've run out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank, of course, the one, the only Miss uh, Miss Clark Wolf. I was going to say Chris Lee Kennedy. Again. Uh, Again. All the time. Clark you Wolf, thank you for Chris being Lee. here. Where can people thank find you, you on Twitter? I'm at Clark Wolf. Clark with an E, Wolf with an E. The one and the only Chris Lee Kenny, I mean, John Schnepp <laughs> is also joining us. John, where can people find you on Twitter? What happened? Oh, it's my initials. They ch I've changed shape and morphed because of the power of Andrew Garfield. <laughs> Andrew Garfield's amazing, I'm joking, but totally 100% serious, even though I'm joking, powers of Andrew Garfield. Where can you find me at? At John Schnepp on Twitter. And uh, you can find me at John Cambia. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow with another episode of AMC Mailbag. And don't forget to join us Monday through Friday for AMC Mail Talk. Hey, this coming week, we're going to be in San Diego. Uh, you can look in the description for our Masters of the Web panel and our AMC Movie Talk meet and greet. We're all going to be there. But we are also going to be doing our show, AMC Movie Talk, from the San Diego Comic-Con. So uh, keep your eye open for that kind of stuff. So until next time, my name is John Campia for AMC Movie News. Bye-bye. <laughs>